Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com in the topic of circular and satellite motion titled Forces and Free Body Diagrams in Circular Motion. There are some places where it's just called Forces in Circular Motion, or even in the URL, I believe it's called Forces in Circles. Um, so if you see any of those, that's what this one applies to. So there are a couple things you need to know to complete this concept builder. The first is you need to know the six forces. Now, if you've done recognizing forces, you could skip to the next time link down in the description. Um, if you have not and you want a more complete uh, description, go ahead and click on the link in the top right corner here, which will uh, send you to recognizing forces. Okay, so remember there's a normal force. That's whenever two things are squeezed together. There's a uh, force between them, as you see here, often something resting on something else. But anytime there are two surfaces pressed together, the two surfaces are pushing on each other. Frictional force, when there is a normal force, then um, whether the object is sliding or it's attempting to slide, there can be a frictional force that keeps it from moving or slows it down if it is moving. I shouldn't say slows it down, I should say resists the motion because if there's another force, it could overcome it. Um, and the question, the point is not that it's what the effect it has on the ultimate acceleration of it, but what effect it's trying to have. Uh, and then in cooperation with the other forces, the net force, of course, causes the acceleration. Uh, next, gravitational force, that's gravity pulling down. Every gravitational force is down. Uh, that's because the Earth is pulling on everything. We'll talk more about universal gravity later in the course. Um, tension, anytime you have a rope, cable, something like that, force is carried along it to whatever it's tied to. Uh, applied force means somebody is pushing on it. Um, and air resistance means if something is moving, like this little car here is moving, it's bumping into the air molecules that are out here in front of it. As it bumps into those air molecules, they put a force on it, and that is the force of air resistance. Now, for this particular concept builder, you're going to be given a description in words, uh, and then you have to match a free body diagram to it. If you haven't done a free body diagram, here's a link to how to do free body diagrams. Okay, but here's what the diagrams will look like. Well, first of all, before that, these are all dealing with circular motion. So if we have circular motion, as we learned recently, um, there, that, that net force has to point towards the center of the motion. So if we're talking about a planet moving around the sun, the force on the planet is always towards the sun, the net force. Now that's being caused by gravity in that situation. Uh, if I spin something over my head, tension is pulling the thing towards the center. Uh, more or less. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but there's always something that's pulling it towards the center, and that force towards the center, or the net force, has to be towards the center, and that's what's making it curve into the circular motion. So you'll end up, for each one, clicking through a bunch of uh, force diagrams like this one. And what you'll see is you'll see this little semicircle here. It indicates that the object is coming from in front of the screen, curving into the screen, going behind the screen, and going that way. And that's kind of the idea of that semicircle there. Um, that's what you'll you'll see. Uh, I suppose you could picture it the other way. I always picture it out in front of the screen here and behind the screen back there because it goes behind those words. Okay, so as it does that, there'll be a bunch of forces here. Anytime you got this one, you could eliminate it. Why? And don't try and memorize this exact one, but because this force, well, first of all, these two forces cancel, so they aren't going to produce a net force, but this is bigger than this. So in this case, the net force is in this direction. Well, if the net force is in this direction, it would make the object curve this way instead of this way. Okay? And therefore, we can eliminate this one from our consideration because it's in order to curve this way the bigger force has to be towards the center this is the center of the circular motion net force has to be towards the center not just one of the forces but the net force the combination of the forces so this next one we could also eliminate because these two cancel out these two cancel out and so there's no net force here whatsoever so whatever this object is doing here it would keep going in a straight line in that direction. And so it's not curving in this circle because there is not a net force towards the center. 
Finally, we have a net force that is towards the center. If this is curving like this, there'd be a net force towards the center. So now these ones, we didn't even have to pay attention to what kind of force they were. Let's actually cross them out. That is not possible. Not towards the center. This one's not possible. It doesn't have a net force towards the center. This one has a net force towards the center, but look at this. It's gravity. Does gravity, assuming this is not like the earth going around the sun, in that case, gravity would pull it towards the center, but there wouldn't be friction in a normal force. I believe all of these examples are things happening on the surface of the earth. And if they're happening on the surface of the earth, gravity should be pointed down. So therefore, this one is incorrect. That's This is where your knowledge of the, the types of forces, being able to recognize the different types of forces becomes important because this one, all the forces look like they would cause a circular motion like that, but there's no way gravity would be pointing down. Our next example here, we have a friction pointers the center and a normal force pointing up. Those both are possible, absolutely. And gravity's pointing down. That makes a lot of sense. So this one could be right. Then we have to read what the situation is. And so it depends on the situation. So for example, this would be correct if we were talking about a road and a car, this is gonna be my car from behind, okay, and give it like, I don't know, like that, maybe it's got some tail lights. If the car from behind, the, the normal force between the car and the road is indeed pushing up. If the car is turning like this, friction is pushing the car this way and gravity is pulling the car down. So if your written description talks about a car turning in a circle, turning turning a left turn or a right turn, whatever the turn might be, if the friction is pointing towards the center of the circle and the normal is pointing up, that would be it, as long as it was a horizontal roadway. If you have a banked roadway, you have a different situation, okay, if the roadway is banked. All right, then our final one here uh, is uh, similar, but instead of oops i think i left the pen no, i didn't so i think i just have to click that there we go so now you notice that the normal force and the friction are backwards well this would be totally incorrect for the car going around a corner well in order for there to be a normal force we'd have to have two surfaces here like this pushing our object this direction okay well we certainly could have that we could have let's go ahead and draw it in kind of you could have some sort of object here or something that's moving around in the circle with us. And, and there's a person here or an object here that's being pushed here. Gravity's trying to pull the person down the wall. Friction's pushing it up. We're going to see that example in just a moment. Okay. So that one's possible because the, the net force is going towards the center. Okay. Once again, the two opposite forces here cancel out. This is the net force because it's the only force left over and it's pointing towards the center of this circle. All right, let's do a couple examples. I chose to do them with videos um, because it's easier to picture. So I highly recommend when you read the words in your description, try to picture what's going on, close your eyes, visualize it if you need to, but something like this. We looked at these uh, videos in an earlier uh, concept builder. Oh, I'd better clear that. So here we have a hammer thrower. He's going to spin his ball. And we're going to look at somewhere in this situation here what, uh, what the forces look like. Okay. So, and there he goes. Woo! World record or something. All right. Oops. Need to get back to here. And there we go. And back to there. There we go. All right. So as the ball is somewhere over here, it's kind of a blur because it's moving so fast. If it's moving in this direction, you see that semicircle that was drawn for us. We see the centripetal forces this direction. Now, instead of looking at it from above here, I want to imagine we rotate down. We kind of look from this direction. Then we'd see something like this. Okay, so the our man is in here doing the hammer throw. He's got his arms here, and there's a string coming there. Now, the tension, I just grabbed this from one of the examples um, the tension isn't quite at the right angle for our hammer thrower okay it would have been flatter like this and said tension okay but the idea that i want to talk about here is the idea of 
something at an angle. Because at least for my students, this is new because we skipped the direct the, the units on uh, two dimensional motion. So if you see something at an angle, what you need to know, and those of you who already did this probably already know this, is that this can be broken down into part of that force uh, pulling upward and part of that force pulling sideways. Okay, and I'm just going to say this, if there's a, a, a force at an angle like that, you can be pretty confident that the upward force is going to cancel the downward force and the leftover force will be uh, your net force. Okay, there isn't necessarily a good way for you to calculate that exactly with the information given. So just assume that those two are equal and therefore they cancel out. Okay, so that's key with these angular ones. And that's what's going on here. The, the circle that the hammer is going in will never be quite horizontal because gravity is pulling it down. And so the upward part of that angled, angu angled force of the tension is going to be up. By the way, T-E-N's means tension. And, and then the horizontal force, which is the main thing, is making it go in that very quick circle that you saw it going in. All right, let's take a look at our last example. So here we see the rotor, uh, it's a ride at an a, a amusement park, spins around. You can see the wall is pushing the people inward. That's the normal force. Friction is keeping them from sliding to the ground. Okay, and so we see the centripetal force is pointing towards the center. I, this one does it on the other side of the, the rotor. Um, so the normal force is putting them towards the center. Friction is keeping them from sliding down the wall because gravity is trying to pull them down the wall. Okay. You saw one person like leap upwards. That wouldn't happen because of this, they must have jumped or done something or spun, put some force uh, in addition to just the friction they were pushing somehow. Okay. And then they could go that way. All right, um, but just standing there, the friction would equal the force of gravity. The normal force is this way. These two cancel out, and that makes the person go in the circle with the uh, spinning object. So that's the fun of this one. You look for the six kinds of forces you know, and you try and figure out what's pushing in what direction, and you make sure that the net force is pointing towards the center. All right, have fun puzzling this out in the Concept Builder. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And don't forget to click that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. We'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.